Hi, Abraham. I have been struggling with really translating into what Source Energy is telling me through the Emotional Guidance System. Yes. Like four months ago. Why are you calling it a struggle? Because maybe somehow the intellectual system is conflicting with the emotional guiding system. That's a common thing, but play it down. Don't make a big thing about it. Don't you think your emotions are more noticeable to you than they used to be? They are heightened. We talk about it in San Diego in an event. You put me on the chair. Yeah. And how that emotional guidance system like 10 years ago got heightened. Yeah. And it's getting really stronger each day. But well, is that a good thing? It's, Are you telling us that you have no control over your thoughts so that you're having to endure a lot of negative emotion? Maybe I am too attached to all the way of being instead of listening to the emotional guidance system and that it got heightened. It may take a while. In other words, we see all of you hold sort of stubbornly to some of your beliefs that don't serve you. Beliefs about aging and beliefs about being inadequate and beliefs about unworthiness. But little by little, they begin to dissolve and lose their grip on you. And something that is helpful, you wanted to do two things help those dissolve a little at the same time that you are spending more time talking about what you do want. But we think it is interesting and you are like so many people and we understand it in this setting or environment. The first thing that you said, almost the first words out of your mouth were struggle, yeah. not desire. And so it shows that you are oriented like so many of trying to fix a problem. In other words, if I can fix the problem, then the struggle will be over. But it's attention to the problem that keeps the struggle going. So the struggle won't stop until you just pretend like it doesn't matter. Just do your best to ignore it. Take your attention from it. You know, like this happened to me specifically. I got a scam by someone who is dear to me. And it, it cost me a lot of time to realize this, you know, that I was taking advantage of. But you see, think of the enormous advantage in that. Because from it, even though it is not something wanted, wonderful things come from it, don't they? Well, I have had to grow out of it, realize other things that I can do differently and to really open my eyes and not allow that the love that I have for someone could hinder my relationship to my source. And that's not worth celebrating? Yeah. Yeah. That was so beautifully said and beautifully understood. So here's something that happened that nobody wants to happen that is a sort of common occurrence and is sort of accepted as reality and then a deliberate creator has it happened to them and it makes you question a little bit how could I have attracted something like this why would something like this happen to me yes. and we want to say to you isn't it a wonderful thing when something happens to you and you're able to see your part in the attraction of it Yes? yes now here's the next thing that we want you to hear your part in the attraction of it does not mean that you were a negative creator or that you were a not good creator what if it is part of the process of helping you to understand something that you really want what if that whole experience was for the important purpose of you coming to the conclusion that you just so eloquently expressed to us just now because there will always be rascals out there and there will always be those who disagree with the way you live life and there will even be those 
who in their shortage consciousness believe that they need to take from you what you believe is yours or that they don't have enough on our being unjustly treated there will always be those who in their shortage consciousness want to take it from you who want to even out the pie and make it a little more fair for everyone because yeah. they just don't understand and so you cannot protect yourself from that one or that one or that one or that one and you cannot take your eyes from them either because they exist they are sort of rampant among you they are everywhere but you don't want to be in this guarded stance instead you want to be in that compassionate stance and by that we mean you know that they exist you accept their existence you even understand some of their thinking and why they do what they do but in your alignment with source which is what you just talked about you're able to see them and love them just the same because they bear no threat to you they bear no threat to you oh. they pose no threat to you they only pose a threat to you if you're in that guarded stance the only threat that anyone could ever pose to you is that they can make you defensive and in your defensiveness you lose your connection with your guidance and your clarity and your resources we've been talking a lot about this receptive mode I want to demonstrate for you just a little bit so contrast causes you to put a lot of things in your vortex and the vortex spins and gestates and law of attraction gathers it and it gathers momentum and it becomes a reality that will occur to you if you're in the receptive mode that's when you get an idea oh, you got that idea you, because you were in alignment with what the vortex is and so the vortex just carried out into your physical experience and the momentum of it will carry you right to a manifestation of it this receptive mode means the mode of being able to receive the vibration like Esther right now she's in the receptive mode so she can hear isn't the right word she can know she's receiving the vibrational knowing that we are presenting and she's translating it into a manifestation that you are hearing as words or speech well you all are doing that all the time too you get in that receptive mode and the impulse comes to be in the right place at the right time and so on to have the joyful experiences that are available to you but we want to call that receptive mode also what it really is the replenishing mode people can't take from you as fast as you can replenish it you have no shortage whatsoever and when you know that you don't just start giving to everybody because they really want to find their own way it's not a good idea for you to be doing all the giving and somebody else doing all the taking that's not what we're talking about but when you are in that replenishing mode and flowing then someone takes something from you it takes your time or takes your attention or even takes your assets or your money and you stand in this knowing I understand who you are I've been there I remember when I didn't know what I know and I look forward to you coming to a time maybe when you'll know what I know because I know shortage consciousness is very painful and I'm glad to have given it up but now I'm in the replenishing mode and I know that this resourceful universe will yield to me all that I will allow there's a stream flowing to me of ideas that will lead to manifestations and as I tap into that ah, it's just uncanny how clever the universe is in guiding me to the resources and the abundance and the blessings that are for me that are for me that are for me that I and others put into my vortex that have been gestating that are just for me they've got my DNA in them they're encoded for me they're vibrationally mine to claim and only mine to claim no one can get into my vortex and take it from me but I can deprive myself of it by worrying about you taking some dollars from me I can deprive myself of my vortex and all the abundance of it of all of the clarity and good timing and wisdom and all of the millions and 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 millions of dollars that are flowing to me that will be a manifestation one day unless I freak out and get upset about the paltry little stuff that you took from me in your ignorance of law of attraction I don't damn you and I don't blame you I understand you because I was there but I don't do that anymore Really I have other question. Is it short? Yes. I want your advice or to see what, if it's true what I'm feeling. Yes. You know, 
Uh, it is. I used to sing and sing mainly Barry White songs. Can you imagine what his singing voice sounds like? <laughs> From the beauty of his speaking voice. Thank you. But I realized this during a time how I was using my hands and somehow spreading or channeling energy, healing energy for the people while I was doing this. Yes. And people used to come to see me because they have realized that this guy can heal while he's singing and how, he, how he's using his hands. I got a little afraid and, you know, embarrassed about this and I stopped doing this. Then I came back to do this. Now more, owning it more and more... Leave it as it is for now until you gain the confidence that you're wanting and then follow what inspiration comes to you. And let your knowledge of what it feels like when it flows through you be the thing that you're focusing on just for a little while. No question about it. It's something to flow and something to enjoy. Not something you're assigned to, not something you're supposed to do, not something that you need to do. Let it be something that you want to do. Line up with that. Yes? Just let it flow. Yeah. Like Can't stop it. Can't stop it. <laughs>